afternoon and thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Deckers Brands fourth quarter fiscal 2024 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen only mode. Following the presentation, we will conduct a question and answer session. Instructions will be provided at that time for you to queue up for questions. If anyone has any difficulties hearing the conference call, please press star zero for operator assistance at any time. I would like to remind everyone that this conference call is being recorded. I'll now turn the call over to Aaron Kohler, VP Investor Relations and Corporate Planning. Hello, and thank you everyone for joining us today. On the call is Dave Powers, President and Chief Executive Officer, Steve Fashing, Chief Financial Officer, and Stefano Carodi, Chief Commercial Officer. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone of the company's safe harbor policy. Please note that certain statements made on this call are forward-looking statements within the meaning of the federal securities laws, which are subject to considerable risks and uncertainties. These forward-looking statements are intended to qualify for the safe harbor from liability established by the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. All statements made on this call today, other than statements of historical fact, are forward-looking statements and include statements regarding our current and long-term strategic objectives, anticipated impacts from our brand and marketplace management strategies, changes in consumer behavior, strength of our brands, demand for our products, product and channel distribution strategies, including direct-to-consumer, marketing plans and strategies, disruptions to our supply chain and logistics, our anticipated revenues, brand performance, product mix, margins, expenses, inventory levels, and promotional activity, the impacts of the macroeconomic environment on our operations and performance, including fluctuations in foreign currency exchange rates, and our ability to achieve our financial outlook. Forward-looking statements made on this call represent management's current expectations and are based on information available at the time such statements are made. Forward-looking statements involve numerous known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors that may cause our actual results to differ materially from any results predicted, assumed, or implied by the forward-looking statements. The company has explained some of these risks and uncertainties in its SEC filings, including in the risk factor section of its annual report on Form 10-K and quarterly reports on Form 10-Q. Except as required by law or the listing rules of the New York Stock Exchange, the company expressly disclaims any intent or obligation to update any forward-looking statements. On this call, management may refer to financial measures that were not prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles in the United States, including constant currency. In addition, the company reports comparable direct-to-consumer sales on a constant currency basis for operations that were open throughout the current and prior reporting periods. The company believes that these non-GAAP financial measures are important indicators of its operating performance because they exclude items that are unrelated to and may not be indicative of its core operating results. With that, I'll now turn it over to Dave. Thanks, Aaron. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I am thrilled to be here sharing and celebrating Decker's incredible achievements in fiscal year 2024. For the full year, we delivered revenue growth of 18% versus last year, nearly reaching $4.3 billion of annual revenue, gross margin of 55.6%, a 530 basis point increase over last year, operating margin of 21.6%, and earnings per share of $29.16, representing a 51% and nearly $10 increase over last year. These extraordinary results are a testament to the success of our long-term strategies and the execution of our hardworking employees. Over the past four years, Decker's revenue has grown at a compound annual growth rate of 19%, adding over $2 billion of incremental revenue. We also substantially expanded profitability as earnings per share has grown at a CAGR of 32%. With the scale of our organization's growth, we are continuing to bolster our foundation through investments that support the long-term success of our leading brands. Hoka and UGG have become two of the strongest and most in-demand brands in the footwear space. They are continuing to win with consumers by infusing performance and fashion into products that embrace their respective brand codes. Building on the outstanding progress we have made over the last few years, our teams are laser focused on the significant opportunities that lie ahead as we seek to build Hoka into a multi-billion dollar global player in the performance athletic space, grow UGG with premium products and elevated experiences that enhance consumer connections, 
expand DTC through engagement, acquisition, and retention gains, and advance our international markets through targeted investments. Our robust and innovative product pipeline, comprised of relevant and distinct products, is amplified by our marketplace management strategies and gives us the confidence to continue progressing on these initiatives as we create the future of Deckers. Steve will provide further specifics about our fiscal year 2025 expectations, as well as our fiscal year 2024 financial performance. But first, I would like to share some of the brand and channel highlights. Starting with the brand highlights. Global HOCA revenue in fiscal year 2024 was $1.8 billion, representing an increase of 28% versus the prior year. For the year, HOCA growth was driven by increased brand awareness, with the U.S. rising to approximately 40%, and international regions on average reaching just over 20%, global DTC, which increased 40% versus last year, market share gains with key global wholesale partners, and most importantly, success with new performance innovations across the road, trail, and lifestyle product categories. From a brand awareness standpoint, these are significant strides for HOCA. Across the board, HOCA is experiencing significant gains on both a season-over-season season and a year-over-year year standpoint. Aligned with our strategy to solidify HOCA as a global player, international regions are driving particularly strong gains in awareness, increasing more than 80% versus the prior year. Global consumers who identify as runners remain our highest awareness group and continue to see strong increases, but we are also seeing really powerful growth among consumers who are more general fitness-oriented. While HOGA is increasing its awareness across all age groups, growth is strongest among 18 to 34-year-olds globally, with brand awareness among this influential age group nearly doubling year over year. We believe the continued progress introducing HOGA to new consumers around the world has resulted from our increased investments in brand marketing through the expansion of the Fly Human Fly campaign, including greater out-of-home digital and physical assets, dedicated and enhanced sponsorship of both globally recognized and local running events, such as UTMB, with HOCA becoming the new title sponsor, enriched engagement with social media across various platforms, and a greater retail footprint that allows for community building activities like our HOCA Run Club. We are pleased to see these investments paying off, not only through increased awareness across markets, but also by growing brand consideration and purchase intent some of which is happening in real time. We are proud of the great progress our teams are making, but also recognize that HOCA still has plenty of room to grow, awareness, consideration, and ultimately market share across all global regions. HOCA has an amazing opportunity ahead as the brand continues to win with consumers around the world, and we look forward to facing this challenge head on through a relentless focus on product innovation and authentic consumer engagement. From a channel perspective, HOCA continues to excel across its ecosystem of global access points. Recall, at the outset of fiscal year 2024, we noted the brand's focus on building full price market share with existing points of wholesale distribution through a pull model and increasing the mix of DDC through consumer acquisition and retention gains. The result of our disciplined marketplace management strategy achieved both goals, with HOCA delivering record gross margins as the brand benefited from maintaining exceptionally high levels of full price selling, despite operating in a more promotional marketplace, and shifting mix to DDC, which increased to 38% up from 34% in the prior year. I would also note that the Hoka brand's strong growth through full price selling in the wholesale channel was accomplished primarily through market share gains with existing distribution and greater efficiency with recently opened doors relative to locations that were eliminated. Regarding HOCA DTC, revenue growth was driven by global increases in acquired and retained consumers, which expanded 32% and 44% respectively. We remain encouraged by the growth across markets, with the U.S. continuing to deliver strong increases in alignment with the global averages and international regions increasing more than 50% in both acquisition and retention. These consumer growth figures are leading indicators of HOCA brand adoption, highlighting the brand's ability to both expand the scope of HOCA consumers and retain existing consumers through consistent product innovations that delivered an unmatched wearing experience. 
As we continue to introduce Hoka to new consumers around the world, we view branded retail stores in key cities as an important consumer engagement vehicle. Just a few weeks ago, Hoka opened its second European retail store in Paris, France. Though only open for a short time, we have been very encouraged by the consumer feedback, conversion, and broad product adoption. We are excited for Hoka to have a footing in this important market, particularly as the location expects to see high traffic during the upcoming Summer Olympics. On the product front, Hoka is driving growth and consumer acquisition through innovative updates and new introductions across a diverse assortment of footwear. The Hoka brand's fiscal year 2024 performance was primarily driven by road-running favorites like the Clifton and Bondi franchises, stability staples like the Arahi and Gaviota, both of which received updates during the year, trail conquerors like the Speedgoat, Challenger, and Stinson franchises, and everyday performance lifestyle shoes like the Transport, Solomar, and the Kiwana. We expect these styles will continue to contribute to the growth of Hoka moving forward, but are also really excited about the brand's ongoing efforts to constantly infuse new innovations into the product assortment. Back in February, we highlighted the launch of the all-new Cielo X1, which represents the pinnacle of the Hoka brand's race offering. We have been in awe of the consumer response to this incredible shoe, which sold out almost immediately in the initial launch colorway. While we don't expect to drive significant volumes on this very specific ultra-performance shoe, we're excited and encouraged by the consumer demand validating Hoka in this category. Our progress in this more niche category is designed to emphasize the brand's performance roots, even as we expand the consumer aperture to more commercial styles. With respect to these broader, more commercially focused products, we have been impressed by the consumer response to our latest update of the Mach franchise, the Mach 6. This completely redesigned silhouette was upgraded with a supercritical foam midsole and strategic rubber coverage on the outsole for greater durability, while remaining our lightest Mach to date. Sales through of this versatile and responsive style at our wholesale partners and in our DDC channel has been exceptional, with the Mach 6 becoming a top five style across all of Deckard's since its launch. Innovation is the Hoka brand's top priority, continuing to develop groundbreaking products that energize consumers around the world. We are fortunate to have a phenomenal roster of Hoka athletes who we will continue partnering with to drive greater athlete-enhanced innovations into our most pinnacle products, while also further developing the assortment to segment and differentiate Hoka distribution as we continue to scale. The recently launched Skyward X is the perfect example of new product innovation that benefits our segmentation efforts. This all new style was developed as our first carbon plated shoe that is designed for everyday runs with maximum cushion. The Skyward X has a revolutionary suspension system to pair with its convex carbon plate that gives the runner cushion for impact with a natural spring forward. This style helps elevate the Hoka assortment sitting above other max cushion styles from both a price point and performance perspective. This allows Hoka to widen distribution on other styles while the Skyward X is targeted for specific accounts like Run Specialty, Top Strategic Performance Doors, and our DDC channel. As we methodically open new access points for Hoka over the next year, we continue to fine tune differentiated assortments across geographic markets and channels of distribution. I could not be prouder of the Hoka team's incredible results over the last year. We are pleased to now have a proven industry leader like Robin Green, who joined us in February, leading the team, and are looking forward to the positive impact we believe she can have to drive Hoka into its next phase of growth. Moving on to UGG, global revenue in fiscal year 2024 was $2.2 billion, representing an increase of 16% versus the prior year. For the year, UGG growth derived from the key initiatives set forth at the outset of FY24, as aligned product, marketing, and commercial execution drove global increases in DDC acquisition and retention and expansion in international markets. These results are a testament of our powerful product engine and disciplined product management strategy. The UGG brand continues to maintain important relationships with valued wholesale partners while delivering strong results through the segmentation and differentiation of global marketplaces. With the allocation of core products driving high levels of full price sell through and lean inventories in the marketplace, UGG has become a leading brand in wholesale, 
while funneling upside demand to the DDC channel. For the year, this contributed to global gains in both DDC acquisition and retention, which increased 18% and 17% respectively, contributing to the UGG brand's 22% increase in global DDC revenue. This is a truly impressive result for our DDC channel and speaks to the work our brand, marketing, and PR teams have been doing to maintain high levels of brand heat year-round, from seeding products with global and regional influencers, creating compelling product collaborations with prominent brands, and showing up on the runway at fashion weeks around the world, to deepening consumer connections through elevated brand experiences like the Fieldhouse or a recent Formula One activation. The UGG team has consistently developed interesting and on-brand content to stay top of mind with consumers. We believe the continued focus of our teams on working with local individuals across global markets has helped UGG connect and resonate more effectively with international consumers. Whether it be partnering with Hani from KPOC Group New Jeans or the collaboration with Gallery Department, expanding access to influential retailers in Europe, these efforts have helped establish UGG in its healthiest position to date across influential international markets. This contributed to UGG delivering an international growth rate of more than two times that of the double-digit revenue growth from the U.S. market. The success of these initiatives drove significant shifts in the composition of UGG revenue aligned with our long-term strategy, with DDC increasing to a record 50% of mix and international increasing to 37% of mix up from approximately 30% three years ago. Both of these shifts were margin accretive, and when combined with exceptionally high levels of full price selling and benefits from select price increases, resulted in record high gross margin for the UGG brand in fiscal year 2024. Of course, this is all underpinned by the UGG brand's ongoing creation of compelling products that are resonating around the world. What impresses me most about the UGG brand's performance in fiscal year 2024 is that the brand drove a 16% increase in revenue through single-digit unit growth with significantly fewer SKUs than the prior year. UGG was able to achieve this because of the increased global alignment on the brand product assortment, creating efficiencies on marketing stories and inventory purchasing. Last year, we spoke about the UGG team's focus to reimagine iconic styles, and that is exactly what we saw play out during FY24 and what we continue to see consumers excited about in the upcoming fiscal year. The UGG product team continues to delight consumers by creating threads that connect new styles to existing icons. Over the last couple of years, we've seen this take shape with the Ultra Mini, inspired by the Classic Mini, Platform Classics, inspired by the original Classics, and the Taz, inspired by the Tasman. These are just a few examples of product evolutions that have helped UGG build the shoulder seasons outside of fall and winter attracting new consumers while remaining rooted in the brand's heritage. Keeping an eye on the future, UGG continues to build upon franchises that are a reimagining of existing icons in new categories. The Golden Collection is one we continue to be very excited about. UGG first introduced the Golden Star Sandal a couple of years ago, which is a strappy sandal inspired by the original classic boot. This style has continued to blossom on its own, and we're also seeing great enthusiasm for new adjacent styles in the collection, including the Golden Glow Sandal, a water-friendly colorful version of the original Golden Star, which has become an instant hit, and the Golden Star Clog, which was spotted on basketball superstar Caitlin Clark shortly after she was drafted first overall to the WNBA. Outside of the Golden Collection, UGG is developing compelling new products in the slip-on shoe and sneaker category, which includes the Low Mel, a sneaker silhouette inspired by the original new Mel boot that continues to sell out quickly as new inventory comes into the marketplace, and Venture Days, a rugged outdoor take on the original Tasman, which sold out quickly in China and was recently worn by Formula One star Pierre Gasly at the Miami Grand Prix. These emerging franchises, along with complementary styles, give us confidence that UGG will continue to capitalize on high levels of brand heat and demand to deliver strong performance for years to come. Congratulations to the UGG team on another excellent year. Moving to our discussion of consolidated channel performance, Decker's fiscal year 2024 results reflected the success of our omni-channel marketplace management strategies that continue to preserve our brand's premium positioning around the world. 
By tightly managing marketplace inventory, we were able to drive strong full-price sell-through, increase market share, and capture upside demand in our direct-to-consumer channel. This led to outstanding DDC growth, which for fiscal year 2024 increased revenue 27% versus last year by adding nearly $400 million of incremental business. DDC represented 43% of total company revenue, which is up from 40% in the prior fiscal year. DDC gains resulted from strength across brands, with Hoka and UGG DDC increasing 40% and 22% respectively, regions with international and domestic DDC increasing 37% and 22% respectively, and consumers with acquired and retained increasing 21% and 24% respectively across all brands. On a DDC comparable basis, revenue increased 25% versus last year, reflecting positive engagement and conversion of demand for the great products that our brands are bringing to market across both online and in-store direct consumer touch points. From a wholesale perspective, fiscal year 2024 revenue increased 13% versus last year, Growth was primarily driven by high levels of full-price global demand for the UGG and Hoka brands, which resulted in healthy sell-throughs at our valued partners as we maintained lean inventories in the wholesale marketplace. We are entering fiscal year 2025 in a position of strength because of the successful execution of our omni-channel brand and marketplace management strategy. As our brand teams continue to delight consumers with unique and innovative products, our commercial teams will continue to execute on this strategy, working with our fantastic partners to maintain our brand's premium positioning in their respective marketplaces. With that, I'll hand it over to Steve to provide further details on our fourth quarter and full fiscal year 2024 results, as well as our initial outlook on fiscal year 2025. Steve? Thanks, Dave, and good afternoon, everyone. As you've just heard, Decker's performance in fiscal year 2024 was exceptional as we drove our fourth consecutive year of double-digit top-line growth and delivered top-tier levels of profitability. Decker's has added over $1.1 billion of incremental revenue in two years, driven by the strength of the Hoka and UGG brands, as innovative and consumer-obsessed product creation continues to resonate globally. Our flexible operating model and disciplined approach to marketplace management has allowed us to capitalize on these high levels of brand heat while maintaining exceptional levels of full price selling, leading to our record earnings in fiscal year 2024. Our dedication to our long-term strategic initiatives continues to be the foundation for our success as we remain committed to driving profitable growth over the long term. With that, Let's get into a recap of our fourth quarter and full fiscal year 2024 results. For the fourth quarter, revenue came in at $960 million, representing an increase of 21% versus the prior year. Performance in the quarter was driven by Hoka and UGG, which saw increases of 34% and 15% respectively. On Hoka, the brand delivered its first ever half billion dollar quarter, as DTC maintained momentum with volume continuing to grow quarter over quarter and wholesale reaccelerated from both a percentage and volume perspective as the brand benefited from key product launches and wholesale fill-in activity. For UGG, the brand delivered an exceptional quarter as DTC was able to maintain momentum from Q3, delivering another strong increase despite some inventory shortages on certain key products. And wholesale drove growth versus last year, despite selling significantly fewer units, as the brand was able to replace the majority of last year's closeout volume with full price shipments into a depleted marketplace, and international strength was maintained. Gross margin in the fourth quarter was 56.2%, a 620 basis point increase from the prior year. The improved gross margin primarily relates to extraordinary benefits from higher mix of UGG full price selling, including lower closeouts, select price increases, as well as favorable brand and product mix, and freight savings. SG&A for the fourth quarter was $395 million, representing 41.2% of revenue, 
which compares to last year's $290 million and a 36.7% of revenue. SG&A as a percentage of revenue was up 450 basis points year over year, primarily as we accelerated top of funnel marketing spend to build longer term awareness and our strong fiscal 2024 results drove higher performance related compensation. These results coupled with higher interest income and a lower share count from our share repurchase program drove diluted earnings per share of $4.95 which compares to $3.46 in the prior year period, representing a 43% increase. With the strength of our fourth quarter, Deckers delivered exceptional full-year fiscal 2024 results, which includes revenues increasing 18% versus last year to a record $4.288 billion. As compared to last year, revenue growth was driven by robust HOCA growth across regions and channels, led by strong DTC growth of 40% as the brand continues to gain awareness across its well-managed ecosystem of access points, and broad-based UGG growth as the brand grew 16% and eclipsed $2.2 billion of revenue, primarily through DTC and international strength. Gross margins for the year were 55.6% up 530 basis points versus last year. The increase in gross margin was primarily related to favorable UGG full price selling, freight savings, select pricing benefits, as well as favorable brand and product mix, and favorable channel mix with DTC growth outpacing wholesale. SG&A dollar spend for the year was $1.46 billion up 24% versus the prior year's $1.17 billion. SG&A represented 34% of revenue, which is 170 basis points above last year's rate. The SG&A increase as compared to last year was driven primarily by investment in talent to support key functions within our growing organization and higher performance compensation, higher marketing spend, including strategic spend to amplify HOCA awareness in leading international markets, and infrastructure investments and related depreciation to support the continued growth of our organization. This all resulted in a full fiscal year 2024 operating margin of 21.6%, which is 360 basis points above last year, reflecting the improvement in gross margin experienced partially offset by the normalization of our rate of SG&A spent. As illustrated by our results, we continue delivering top tier levels of profitability. And while we are pleased with these results, we remain mindful that the outsized margin expansion experience, particularly from historically low levels of promotion and discounting, may not repeat to the same degree in future periods. For the year, our effective tax rate was 22.4% which is flat to last year. Our strong performance, along with higher interest income and a lower share count from share repurchase activity, culminated in a record diluted earnings per share of $29.16, which represents a 51% increase over last year's $19.37. Turning to our balance sheet, at March 31st, 2024, we ended the year with $1.5 billion of cash and equivalents. Inventory was $474 million, down 11% versus the same point in time last year, and during the period we had no outstanding borrowings. During the fourth quarter, we repurchased approximately $104 million worth of shares at an average price of $875.01 per share. For the entire fiscal year 2024, we repurchased over 700,000 shares for approximately $415 million at an average per share price of $580.44. At March 31st, 2024, the company still had approximately $942 million remaining under its stock repurchase authorization. Now, moving to our outlook. For the full fiscal year 2025, we expect top-line revenue growth of approximately 10% versus the prior year to $4.7 billion, with HOCA as the main driver of growth increasing approximately 20% versus the prior year through 
consumer acquisition and retention gains in our DTC channel, expanding strategically through key partners while maintaining disciplined marketplace management, and maintaining a dedicated focus on growing awareness and market share internationally. UGG increasing mid-single digits, driven primarily by international expansion and managing a healthy U.S. marketplace, which includes prioritizing our DTC channel as we focus on maintaining the brand's pull model. Gross margins are expected to be approximately 53.5%, which is down 210 basis points versus last year, as we are anticipating a more normalized promotional environment with lower full price selling than the exceptional levels achieved in fiscal year 2024 and higher freight costs. SG&A is expected to be approximately 34% of revenue as we continue reinforcing our foundation and supporting key growth initiatives, which includes increased levels of marketing spend, primarily related to our continued focus to expand global HOCA awareness investment in talent to bolster integral teams supporting the growth of our organization, and IT and warehouse investments. We expect an operating margin of approximately 19.5%, reflecting our commitment to deliver top-tier levels of profitability while continuing to invest for the long-term growth of our brands. We are projecting an effective tax rate in the range of 22 to 23%, with this all resulting in an expected diluted earnings per share in the range of $29.50 to $30. Capital expenditures are expected to be in the range of $115 to $125 million, which is above last year as we invest in supply chain and warehouse capabilities, capital IT projects, retail refreshments, including opening select new strategic locations, and updates to office facilities. Please note this guidance excludes any charges that may be considered one time in nature and does not contemplate any impact from additional share repurchases. Additionally, our guidance assumes no meaningful deterioration of current risks and uncertainties, which include but are not limited to changes in consumer confidence and recessionary pressures, inflationary pressures, geopolitical tensions, supply chain disruptions, and fluctuations in foreign currency exchange rates. Looking ahead, we remain focused on executing against our strategic initiatives and delivering towards the full fiscal year. Per normal course, we will not be providing formal quarterly guidance. However, given we are more than halfway through the first quarter, we wanted to provide some context around our expectations for the quarter ending June 30th. These include revenue growth in the high teens as we continue to refill depleted channel inventory that is pulling forward demand this year and HOCA has maintained strong momentum in the DTC channel. Gross margins slightly above the full fiscal year guided rate as we benefit from reduced UG promotion activity relative to last year in this quarter, select price increases on popular UG style that we begin to lap in the second quarter and the largest proportion of HOCA revenue contribution. I would additionally note that beyond the first quarter, our gross margin will be up against exceptional levels of full price selling for the UGG brand, and thus we do not expect the favorability relative to last year to continue beyond Q1. Regarding SG&A, our dollar growth rate in the first quarter is planned significantly higher as we front load investments to support our growing organization. The higher earlier planned spending is driven by investments in marketing to launch brand campaigns that are further supporting some of the demand shifts we are seeing, as well as some earlier FX remeasurement headwinds resulting from the recent strengthening of the US dollar. Thanks everyone. And with that, I'll now hand off the call to Dave for his closing remarks. Thanks, Steve. I am so proud of the tenacity that our teams have consistently demonstrated to outperform expectations while continuously evolving in a dynamic consumer environment. As I near the end of my tenure leading the Decorative organization, I could not be prouder of how far we have come over the last eight years. Our company has transformed into a leading portfolio of consumer favorite brands. We have experienced explosive growth by incredible and still increasing brand heat across HOCA and UGG. 
Our organization has proven to be incredibly resilient, and we have worked with agility to continuously deliver outstanding results. The company's success is largely attributable to our aligned long-term strategies, our highly effective leaders across the organization, and hardworking and caring employees that continue to execute as we transform the business. Deckers is in an excellent position to continue on this path as Stefano steps into the role of CEO in just a few months. He has been a key contributor to our successful transformation and knows what it takes to lead Deckers on this continued journey. He and I are continuing to work together to ensure a smooth transition. Together, we are deeply committed to fostering Decker's collaborative and inspiring culture, inclusive of encouraging authenticity, teamwork, and a common goal to do good and to do great. This has cultivated a strong and growing team of exceptionally talented longtime employees and critical new hires across our global organization, which are the driving force behind our iconic brands and I believe will continue to galvanize the pathway for future success. On behalf of our executive leadership team and board of directors, I'd like to once again thank our employees for all their dedication to Decker's values and delivery of yet another full year of record results. Thank you to all of our stakeholders for the continued support along the way. With that, I'll turn the call over to the operator for Q&A. Operator? Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you have dialed in and would like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad to raise your hand and join the queue. If you would like to withdraw your question, please press star one again. If you are called upon to ask your question and are listening via loudspeaker on your device, please pick up your handset and ensure that your phone is not on mute when asking your question. In the interest of time, we kindly ask that you limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. Our first question comes from Laurent Vasilescu with BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Oh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for taking my question. Uh, Dave, I wanted to ask about HOKA. Um, HOKA mm -hmm. DTC was 38% of the mix for the year, which implies 4Q wholesale grew 40%. Um, so and I think you mentioned wholesale, or maybe Steve, you had mentioned the wholesale fill-in was called out for the quarter. First quarter is also benefiting. Um, what are you seeing in the wholesale um, um, channel? Um, are, are retailers reordering for, um, across the board, or is it being selective? How should we think about HOKA wholesale growth for, for the year itself? Yeah, good question, Laurent. You know, we're still seeing um, healthy demand from our wholesale partners. There was a little bit pulled forward, um, and sell-throughs are strong, so that, you know, that kind of pulled forward mentality um, is still uh, in place, and it, it's right in line with our pull forward model. So, you know, we, we keep our wholesale channels tight and we try to drive more revenue to DDC. Um, and we're going to continue that playbook, you know, going into 25 and beyond. Um, you know, remember, you know, last year we uh, maintained net new doors across wholesale. So, in the wholesale channel, um, in FY25, we'll be opening uh, select doors uh, with uh, select strategic partners, more focused on an international uh, marketplace. Um, but we still have, you know, opportunity in international run specialty. In U.S. run specialty, we're regularly, generally one or two in market share. Um, so just still optimizing that channel. But we have room to grow in our international, uh, you know, strategic run mar um, partners as well. So, um, yeah, the, the marketplace is still strong. The demand is out there from the consumer. We're operating our pull model. Um, and, you know, in, in addition to that, we're, to that, we have DDC, which we are expecting to grow faster than wholesale uh, as we try to bolster that business and we get more interest in the brand from awareness increasing uh, globally, which will help drive that model as well. Um, Stefano, do you want to add anything there? Yeah, Laurent, uh, uh, to build on what Dave just said, um, shelter has been strong. Uh, our key innovation stories for the season have performed very well. Uh, CLX1, uh, not huge volumes there, but has performed super, super well, beyond our expectations. And Mach 6 uh, has performed and is performing very, very well, and it's now a top three style, not just for Hoka, but for Deckers. And Skyward X, which we just launched uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, <coughs> the early read is also very, very, very encouraging yeah. across the globe. That, that, that's great to hear, Stefano. Um, and then on, on Hoka International, I think you, you called it out, Dave. 
Um, mm-hmm. you know, out of the $1.8 billion in sales, is, is it fair to assume that Hoka International is about 30% of the mix? And if that's the case, where, where do you think that goes um, you know, this year or over time? Um, and what region are you most excited about for FY25? Yeah, it's, you're right. It's roughly around 30%. You know, we do see that creeping up over time. We haven't given, you know, hard targets on that, but we are going to be focusing more energy on building awareness, uh, as I said, door expansion, bolstering up our DDC engines in those markets. From a volume perspective, you'll definitely see, you know, upside in Europe. Um, China, you know, is still a small market for us with, you know, tremendous upside uh, and a lot of exciting things going on there. But from a dollar percentage increase, it's still going to be led by Europe in the short term. Yeah, Thank you very much. Yep. Yes, definitely. Uh, I was in Asia last week uh, together with uh, Robin and Anne and the two leadership teams. There's definitely significant potential for both brands um, in China and uh, um, uh, the rest of Asia. Wonderful. Thank you very much for taking my questions. Thanks a lot. Our next question comes from Jay Soul with UBS. Please go ahead. Great, thank you so much. I just want to ask about UGG, uh, you know, getting to mid single digit growth for this year on top of uh, obviously a really big year last year. What gives you the confidence that uh, I'll continue to build on the big growth you've seen, not just last year, over the last couple of years as we, you know, think about, you know, fiscal 25? Thank you. Yeah, you know, I, I've been here now, you know, um, coming up on 12 years, and um, this is the healthiest I've seen the UGG brand. You know, the demand with the consumer, the, the 18 to 24 year old consumer, the broad-based, you know, health of all of our channels, retail stores, e-commerce sites, wholesale partners globally. And essentially what you're seeing is the marketplace, you know, pull model that we put in place in North America a few years ago, um, now that's activated in our international region. So you're seeing brand heat and and consideration among consumers on the international markets um, increasing and very strong. Um, and our pull model is still working. So, you know, we, we like to keep things a little bit scarce. And that led to some of the success we saw in this past Q4, where people were still looking for some of our reimagined icons, like the Taz and the Ultra Mini. Um, normally, we would see those tail off at the beginning of January and February, but those are still strong and starting to become year-round styles. Um, you know, the other th- significant thing last year, we we sold, you know, low single digits um, growth in units, but 18% revenue business, uh, sales on top of that. So we're seeing a very healthy full price business. There's less markdown. There's less assortment in the channel. Um, so we have the right styles for the right consumer in the right locations. And then we're also seeing great success in new franchises like the Golden Star uh, and Venture Days. And so, you know, that combined with just the brand heat, um, the health of the marketplace, way that the, the consumer is um, reacting to our localized marketing activations and our store uh, elevations, we see a lot of optimism uh, for the UGG brand going forward. Uh, but you're going to see continued growth in DDC and a real focus on upside and international. Yeah, Jay, this is yep. Steve. Just, just to kind of add on to that, and I think it's important, and Dave touched on it here, but you know what we saw in FY24 was fairly significant um, dollar increase um, and not so much on the unit side. So because we benefited from full price selling, less closeouts, some of our channel mix, that drove a big proportion of the dollar increase. Um, and while we had some unit increases, what gives us confidence going forward in that mid-single digit guidance is that we're continuing to see more and more consumers engage in the brand. So demand continues to increase. <clears throat> Um, and so we won't necessarily, you know, in the guidance we gave, we're not expecting that kind of same level of gross margin. But what we do see is with the demand that's out there, right, and some of what we delivered in Q4, the consumer response to the product that Dave mentioned, just be continued uh, to see in the marketplace around uh, the UGG brand. And that's what's giving us confidence uh, going forward. Got it. That makes sense. If I can follow up on that, can you just maybe dimensionize a little bit and help us understand how UGG is growing by telling us sort of how you think about growth of sort of the classics versus, you know, all the what I would call the relatively new stuff since the last, you know, few years or so. How do you see the growth rates in those two? Like, if, how is that driving the UGG brand? Yeah, classics, you know, it, it's funny you ask that because it used to be all of our conversations and, you know, majority of our business. Um, and we've been able to just maintain that as a steady, healthy, premium 
well positioned part of our business, you know, roughly around 25, 30% steady sell through steady margin, good handle on inventory and flow. Uh, where we're seeing the exciting things come, uh, the excitement come from is all these reimagined classics that we're talking about. So iterations of the Tasman, iterations of the Low Mel, um, you know, the Ultra Mini, the Ultra Platform. Those styles are broad based, they are resonating extremely well with younger consumers. Um, they're showing up on influencers in a very powerful way, and then we have a me, you know we have a men's business that is starting to uh, show some signs of excitement as well in similar styles. So that's really where the growth is being driven from, and we have an incredible pipeline of product that evolves these styles over the next 18, 24 months. That I think is just a, a phenomenal assortment, uh, some of the most exciting product in the market, and you know, and then we're also innovating around hybrid you know slipper sandal models. Uh, with increased comfort underfoot that I think are going to be really well received. So, um, you know, I think Ann and the team have done a great job on editing the assortment, getting us out of styles that are me too, really focusing on our UGG DNA across any styles that we do, and then a really powerful PR and, and uh, social media engine to drive it all. And so, um, you know, this is a brand that's, that's in a great place right now. It's very healthy, and we believe that this brand has uh, room to grow and continue at this pace. Got it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jay. Our next question comes from John Kernan with TD Cowan. Please go ahead. Congrats on a phenomenal year, and thanks for taking my question. Thanks, John. Stefano, great, great to hear your voice. Uh, just curious how you're thinking about UGG and HOKA, the international opportunity, both from a top-line perspective channel perspective, and then also how the margin profile of the business internationally can uh, evolve. Thank you. Yeah, of course, John. Uh, our business currently is two-thirds U.S. and one-third international, as you know. And of the third of international, 50% comes from Europe, roughly 35 comes from Asia Pacific, and the balance is Canada, Latin America. Clearly, we see a lot of opportunity internationally. And uh, while uh, we expect the U.S. to continue to grow, uh, long term, uh, we would want the international to grow faster. Um, we are, uh, as you heard from Dave, uh, in terms of brand awareness, we are um, uh, well behind where we are in the U.S. Uh, for HOKA, uh, and uh, uh, roughly 20 points behind. So we've been investing more, we've been investing uh, faster internationally to accelerate that growth. And um, also in terms of distribution, um, we intend to se selectively expand our distribution uh, with key partners um, while carefully monitoring the um, productivity of uh, uh, the doors that we expanded. So there's definitely a lot of upside for us internationally, both in terms of top line as well as margin. Yeah, and then John, just this is Steve on the margin question. You know, we really um, we look at the business, and clearly, what we experienced in FY24 was extraordinary um, with gross gross margin expansion. Um, and as you've seen in what we've guided, we don't necessarily expect all of that same benefit in FY25. You know, so on a comparable basis, as we look at it, you know, continued performance of strong margins you know, likely moving back to a more normalized level, as we've indicated in our guidance, uh, but generally, you know, no significant change in margins that we're achieving as we're kind of moving into a more normalized environment. Got it. Extraordinary is a, uh, a good word here to use. I guess yeah. the other extraordinary thing has been the, D the DTC segment contribution margin has skyrocketed the last several years. It's, I think it's over 900 basis higher than wholesale now. Where do you think the, the, the profitability of DTC, is this sustainable at the high 30% level at DTC and do you expect this continued margin mix shift to continue for the direct consumer channel? Yeah, I, you know, again, it, we benefited in all channels with what we saw in FY24. Um, and so clearly with some normalization, a bit of a setback, um, but again, you know, still delivering even in a normalized mode, exceptional levels of profitability. So the way we're seeing the profile or the framework, um, not significant change again as we normalize, um, but as Stefano indicated and Dave has indicated, we're all always looking at how we can drive a higher proportion of our DTC business um, 
which you know overall does have a positive accretive impact on the business. Now, it doesn't happen overnight, right? And so with some of the wholesale expansion <coughs> that we are forecasting in FY25, um, that does take some of the growth. So the other thing that we benefited from was a bit of a step up in our proportion of DTC business in 24 versus 23. Um, and that's because we were running the scarcity model in wholesale. And so we were able to, to fuel more of that demand over into the DTC channel. That fueled some of our gross margin expansion. As we open up a little bit more wholesale in FY25, again, being very strategic and thoughtful about it, that'll put some pressure um, on the DTC growth. But as Dave said, we're still looking to move a higher proportion to DTC, but it won't necessarily be the same step function that you saw in FY24. Got it. Well, congrats on a phenomenal year, Dave. Best of luck, and uh, we'll turn it over. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Our next question comes from Sam Poser with Williams Trading. Please go ahead. Well, thank you for taking my questions. Aaron, let's do it, and then we can go on to the other stuff. Get out of the way. <laughs> Hi, Sam. So what I'll provide for you, um, I think you're asking about the full year. I'll, I'll give you full year. No, no for the quarter. Could you just give us Q4, just so everybody's clear, on either wholesale or DTC by, by brand? We can back into the other part of it. Sure, I can give you fourth quarter. So fourth quarter okay. fiscal 24 that we just completed. So this is going to be global wholesale and distributor combined by brand. Uh, for UGG was about 139 million. For Hoka was about 350 million. For Teva 46 million. Sanook about 5 million. And then you get the other. Okay, thank you. Um, yep. All right. Um, well, Dave, congratulations, first of all, on, on, um, on as you go to the beach and the sunset, leaving lots of sand behind. Um, and uh, so let's talk about UGG. Um, you, you delivered a lot of product early last year. It did exceptionally well, both in the store, both in your own DTC and, and at your wholesale accounts. And then most retailers and yourselves were basically sold out come Thanksgiving. So that leaves a monster upside, still potentially leaving a lot of demand on the table um, in December. What it, how do we think about that, especially that month of December that, you know, all the, everybody was looking at the numbers going, there's no business being done, but there was no inventory in the market. So um, can you tell us how this mid single digit works when it looks like you have a ton of white space and, the, and arguably one of the largest consumer, direct-to-consumer volume months of the year? Yeah. Um, you know, I think what we're experiencing now, and you saw it in quarter quarter, is a lot of that demand that we missed in December uh, came to us in Q4. And so people, when we got back in stock in some of those styles, people still wanted them. And so they were buying them in January, February, March, and, you know, still are. So um, I wouldn't say that we missed, you know, whatever opportunity we missed in December – um, it's all lost. We did fulfill some of that demand uh, over the last three to four months. Um, that being said, yeah, there's opportunity this year. Um, we're excited about the assortment. You know, and as I also mentioned, you know, we think we can maintain high levels of full price sales, but, um, you know, it's still going to be a, a challenging environment out there. I think that the way we're pegging the business with the assortment, um, we don't have any necessarily any new price increases this year. And I think, you know, maintaining a tight rein on, on wholesale and driving it to DDC, um, I think that's about right, the way we pegged it and the way we're looking at the business going into it now. Yeah, I think also, Sam, Steve, just on that, too, the other consideration is we did expedite product in in Q3, and that sold through on DTC, so through e-commerce. Yeah. This year, we're going to be expanding um, mm -hmm. some of the amount that wholesale is ordering. Again, we'll be very careful and strategic about it, but that'll put some of the pressure on um, the DTC growth, right? And so, again, going back to my earlier answer to one of the previous questions, a big piece of the revenue beat on UGG was this full price selling channel mix shift. Um, and so you're not necessarily gonna have that same benefit in FY25 that we had in 24. You know, copying an 18% growth is no cakewalk. Yeah. 
Oh, no, I, I appreciate that, but I mean, I've seen some of the fall product, and it looks pretty, you know, you've got a few things up your sleeve there that could do a lot more than what you anticipated. Let me just ask you this. At the beginning, you beat, you beat your, your rev, the high end of initial revenue guidance by 8.5%. You, you beat your, EPS, your initial EPS guidance by 35. You beat your gross margin by 310. And you beat your EBIT margin by 300 basis, 360 basis points based on what your initial guidance was last year. Is there, are you guiding this year sort of relatively differently? Are you looking at the world the same way? Are you looking at it differently than you did a year ago at this time? Yeah, I th I, Sam, I think, you know, the way we're looking at it is we're not going to get the same benefits in FY25 that we got in 24. Again, so that, that the difference between the revenue change and the unit change is one that's really important to understand. Because what we benefited from in 24 was full price selling combined with price increases, combined with running a scarcity model that drove more traffic into DTC. So we won't have the same level of benefit on price increases in FY25 that we had in 24. Um, we'll see what the promotional environment looks like. Um, you know, that's always a hard one to determine, especially in the current environment, a lot of uncertainty. You're hearing what some other companies are saying. So that's one that we will continue to carefully watch. We're being served well with kind of a controlled marketplace. Um, so we'll continue to look at it. But I don't think the setup, to your point, is the same. I think there were more factors that we knew we could benefit from in 24 than in 25. But again, we'll manage through 25 and we'll see how it turns out. Thank you guys very much and continued success and uh, good luck as Thanks. you walk off into the sunset. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Hey. I'll miss you. <laughs> Our next question comes from Janine Stichter with BTIG. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Congrats on the, the really strong year. Um, to start out, a question on HOCA. You mentioned seeing awareness from um, non-runners to everyday athletes and, and more casual styles. So how do you think about just further segmenting the assortment and the distribution to cater to this consumer while still keeping your heritage? And then uh, one for Steve on SG&A. You know, you're flipping to basically a flat SG&A rate this year after a year of deleverage. You just kind of think about where you are in that reinvestment cycle. I know you've been playing a little bit of catch up on SG&A. And if you do see upside to your revenue guide on, re on revenues, uh, how you would think about further reinvestment from here. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks, Janine. You know, on the um, on the consumer breadth of Hoka, you know, it's pretty exciting, right? And one thing I can guarantee you that we will always prioritize our performance business first. And so we are, there's no doubt, we are a performance innovation driven company, um, and that's going to be our priority. We'll always priorita prioritize a specialty run uh, accounts. We'll all, we'll always prioritize that, you know, the hardcore running and, and trail running consumer. Um, but we obviously have been adopted in a pretty substantial way from a lifestyles perspective. And that's because of the performance that's built into the product. It's not just that they look good, but they feel good. And now they become something that these consumers, they not only want the product, they need the product. They need the next uh, color. They need the next version of the Bondi or the Clifton, the Arahi, and now the Mach. So that will just expand over time um, as we segment um, the line over time, and, and you know, we've been doing this from day one, is innovation that's appropriate to the channel, segmenting by channel and consumer, uh, particularly as we get into Dix and JD and Foot Locker and broader doors. Um, and there's, you know, I also believe there's just a generalized trend out there that running is kind of becoming the new streetwear. Those looks are adopted by more consumers now than they ever have been. And we see that continuing. And, um, you know, we, we welcome those consumers into the brand, but they will be buying performance product from us, not lifestyle uh, design product. And then, uh, Jeannie, just on the SG&A, so I think, you know, in, in terms of where we landed FY24, the 34% um, spend to revenue and the guide equivalent for FY25, you know, we think that's kind of the appropriate level. We'll see. Um, it is increasing from where we've been the past couple of years as we've made um, investments and continue to make investments, and I called it out on the script, um, in terms of building talent, infrastructure, 
um, distribution. So, you know, it, as we're growing and continue to grow at a, at a slightly faster pace than what we anticipated, there's still a bit of a catch up uh, that you're seeing. You know, I think as we, as we continue to look at the year, we'll manage accordingly. I think that has served us well. Uh, we haven't gotten ahead of the growth. Um, but we're carefully monitoring to keep pace with it, and that's some of the, the increases that you've seen uh, really over the last couple of years. Great, thanks so much. That's really helpful, and best of luck. Thanks, Janine. Our last question for today comes from Jonathan Comp with Baird. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I wanted to ask about HOCA. If I could just ask a near-term question, um, it looks like D to C was up in the, the, the low 20s in the fourth quarter year over year, and you're assuming uh, D to C outgrows for fiscal 2025. So, are you assuming a little bit of a reacceleration? And if so, could you maybe talk about the drivers? And when you think about the product launch strategy for Hoka this year, could you just give insight to um, you know some of the shifts there? I know we haven't seen the the next version of a few of your key icons or, or your your biggest. Uh, styles like Clifton and Bondi. So just how should we think about the, the product launch uh, cadence or cycle? Yeah, I'll tackle with Steve the, you know, the, um, the DDC versus wholesale. You know, generally, yes, we will see, you know, a slight increase in the rate of uh, host, uh, DDC growth the way we're looking at it, you know, and that contemplates a little bit lower um, wholesale. But it's not dramatic on one end or the other. But, you know, as we, as our awareness increases, as we have more uh, international distribution, opening select retail stores, that does drive more traffic and um, a healthy business to our DDC channel. We convert at a very high rate when people come to our website. Uh, and then we have a, a, you know, just a growing uh, repeat business from our uh, existing customer base. And the new launch cadence, as you mentioned, you know, brings eyeballs to the site as well. So we are, and that's, that's by design, we're, we're strategically trying to grow DDC a little bit faster over time because we know that's good for us long term good for margins, good for health of the marketplace, and that pull model is working extremely well. So you'll see this year that we've modeled it out, you know, a little bit better in DDC uh, than wholesale, but, you know, on, on a regional basis, wholesale will be, will be uh, very strong too. Yeah, and what, what I would add, John, just to that is, you know, just be careful about kind of relying too much on a quarter performance. Yeah. You know, we are managing this for the long run. So. Again, when you have depleted um, inventory in the channel, you know, that might uh, impact your wholesale growth in one quarter as you're refilling that. It's not necessarily indicative of the longer term view. So back to Dave's point, as we look at growth, clearly a focus is on trying to grow DTC faster, which is kind of what we are doing and growing the proportion of that. I wouldn't rely too much just on one quarter or a dynamic in that quarter because there are other factors that affect the short term, but we're looking at the long term. Yeah, I think that that's a really good point to keep in mind. Is you know we are we we are not in a um, consistent model of of new introductions of products and drops, right? It's been changing a little bit year over year. We're, we're starting to formalize that a little bit more, but you know sometimes when you see a drop in sales, say credit card data, um, you know you got to look at what's in the market. When do we drop things? What was were we selling last year, full price versus markdown, and you know, that's why I think look at the long view of the year when we have multiple drops over the year, our innovation engine and the pipeline hits the marketplace. It's best to look at that over a 12 to 18 month period versus three months because there's so many puts and takes from new introductions this year, last year, markdowns, et cetera. So um, I think Steve's spot on on that point. Yeah. And two uh, new products, John, we have a, a couple of uh, uh, big programs hitting the market in fall and early next year. Um, Speedgoat is our biggest uh, trail franchise, um, a new uh, Speedgoat 6 uh, was at the market uh, in June. Skyflow is a new um, run specialty exclusive and DTC exclusive that is going to hit the market in July. Uh, that's a sizable program for us. Uh, and uh, Bondi, which is our second biggest shoe, will hit Q4 next year. Uh, an updated Bondi and the shoe looks uh, fantastic. I'm very excited about uh, um, how it's been received by our key partners. That's great. Thanks for all the color, and uh, Dave, uh, best of luck. Thanks again. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks Take care, man. This will conclude our question and answer session, and with that, we will conclude today's conference call.
Thank you all for your participation. You may now just.